relatively large portion of the text and of my other video uh, were both dedicated to just sort of practicing finding least column multiples. So I wanted to go through a step-by-step -step example of actually uh, finding the least common multiple to get a greatest common or a least common denominator so that we can actually add uh, rational expressions that don't have common denominators. Now before I do that I wanted to do a really quick review uh, of just kind of you know what the process is based on just using basic numbers. So you probably remember doing this and um, I would imagine that this isn't really necessary but I figure it never hurts to just do a quick review. If I want to add two fractions I need to have a common denominator. I can't combine two fractions that have different different denominators. So what I need to do is find something that both of these can multiply to become. Now one way to find a number that both both denominators can be is just to multiply the denominators by each other. That isn't always the simplest, but it always works. So if I want to do that, in this case, I can come up with 5 times 3, which I could either write as just 5 times 3, this way, 5 times 3, which is fine, or I can write it as 15 since I know what that is. If I'm doing that, then this uh, fraction over here, 2 thirds, needs to be multiplied top and bottom by 5. So sort of that missing piece. It's already got the 3. Now it needs to be multiplied by 5 so that we have both of them together. And if I do that, then I get you know 3 times 5 gives me that 3 times 5 in the denominator, or 15. And then 2 times 5 gives me 10 in the numerator, right? On the other side, this already has the 5, so I need to multiply this one. Don't want to actually have an equal there. I need to multiply this one top and bottom by 3. So I'll multiply by 3 here, and that gives me 3 times 3, or 9, in the numerator. And now I have that same 5 times 3 in the denominator, right? So now, instead of multiplying, or instead of adding 2 thirds plus 3 fifths, I'm instead adding 10 fifteenths and 9 fifteenths. And those have the same denominator, and I can go ahead and add them, and I get 19 fifteenths. So I'm going to follow exactly the same process here using our rational expressions. If we first factor our two denominators, this was the difference of squares, and this one shares an x, then I get 2x over x plus 2 times x minus 2, and I'm going to add that to x minus 3 over x times x plus 2. So all I did was just factor those, right? Now I'm in the same position I was up here. I need to find a denominator that both of these fractions can become. And that's easy enough. The same way I did before, I'll just take what's there and multiply them together. So if I do that, what I need to have is an x plus 2, an x minus 2, and an x, so that just like I did here, where I had 3 and 5, and 5 and 3 in both denominators, I have all the individual pieces multiplied together in the denominator of our new fractions. So let's do that. I'll have this fraction over here is missing the x. So just like up here where this one was missing the 5, I multiplied the 3 by the 5 to get them both. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to multiply my x plus 2 times x minus 2 by x so that it has all three of them, top and bottom by the same thing. This one is missing. It's got the x and the x plus 2. It's missing the x minus 2. So I'm going to multiply this one by x minus 2 on the top and on the bottom. Now I'll have the same denominator for both of them. It'll be x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Same thing here, right? x, x plus 2, x minus 2. So my new common denominator all the way across will be x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now I just take my numerators. I have x times 2x. That gives me 2x squared. And I'm going to be adding that to x minus 3 times x minus 2. So I have to foil that out. I get x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And negative 3 times x is negative 3x. So I have negative 5x. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. So I have 2x squared plus 1x squared. That gives me 3x squared, and that's taken care of, minus 5x plus 6. And that's over our common denominator, x times x plus 2 times x minus 2. So you can see it's really exactly the same process. I just multiply so that I have the same pieces on both sides. And then when I'm done, 
I reduce my fraction, combine the things together, combine, and then reduce my fraction if I can. So you can see the process is really the same once you understand how to find that least common denominator, or least common multiple, which is why we spent so much time on that on the lesson.